Now we have different examples. Let's let's go examples of uh, subtractive cancellation. Okay, so uh, let's let's use this is going to be a really nice one because one of the next the the first um, as you recall from the overview the next topic uh, that we're going to cover the next major uh, major topic the next part uh, is going to be on on numerical um, numerically finding roots of uh, of equations and uh, this this example is uh, an example of subtractive uh, cancellation that comes in as a result of the quadratic formula. We, we probably all are aware of the quadratic formula uh, where we go the, the root is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now, if we assume that b squared is much larger than 4ac, then we're going to see that we have this subtractive cancellation going on. We have, we have uh, b squared, and we're doing minus uh, 4ac. Uh, so then we have, go up here, this exact problem of subtraction. We have a lot. Uh, all right, so I, I paused the video because I thought, well, uh, I, I was thinking, uh, and, and I want to illustrate this. I, I could just edit the video, but I'm not going to, and the reason is because uh, I, I want you to see uh, what, what, where I was, what I was thinking, because I was thinking that we have this subtractive cancellation, b squared minus four, uh, b squared is much greater than 4ac. Uh, this is the subtractive cancellation problem. This actually isn't a subtractive cancellation problem because uh, subtractive cancellation is when we're, we're combining two numbers that are very close to each other. Uh, this is not subtractive cancellation. Uh, these two numbers are not very close to each other. In fact, 4ac is much smaller than b squared, uh, as we said here. And so, but but, but we still have the problem of subtractive, subtractive cancellation. Uh, we just uh, don't have it uh, in the same, uh, in this term. Uh, to, to explain, if b squared is much larger than 4ac, this is basically going to be uh, b squared. Uh, this is going to be approximately equal to b squared. So, uh, if that's approximately equal to b squared, then we're going to have negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared, okay, which is going to be negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is going to be b, correct? Okay, so great, we're going to have negative b plus or minus b, essentially. Uh, uh, let's see, we'll say, I'm going to, I'm going to, well, I don't know what to do here. I, I'm going to put a, a squiggly on top of b, just because it's not actually b. It's 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 approximately b, right? Because we approximated here. Uh, so b plus or minus this is going to be a subtract. We're going to run a subtractive cancellation here because we have b uh, basically negative b uh, in at least in one case plus b, and that is the that is where we run into the problem of subtractive cancellation. We have both are approximately equal. Now, they propose an alternative formula. In, in the book, you'll see they propose an alternative formula. They say, well, instead of using negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, uh, we can just recast this, and we can say, uh, well, the root then is equal, and, and we know there, there are two roots here, right? There's, there's root one and root two, and, and we get one root from, from adding, and, and so we, we have to recognize here that there's no problem with one of the roots, uh, right? Uh, when we do uh, negative b uh, minus b, that's just uh, negative b minus b is basically like b plus b, and then, and then, and then give it a negative sign, right? Um, and so this is not uh, not really 
a problem. What is a problem is when we have uh, negative b plus b. It's for the other root. Uh, so we can recast this uh, a different way and say the root is equal to uh, negative 2c over uh, b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And we can, well, you should be able to see that what happens here is we do this, uh, we do this uh, b uh, plus b, and so we're combining two b's for, for that particular root and so we don't have the same problem for that root. However, uh, we do introduce this problem uh, for the other root because it's going to be essentially b minus b. And so and so in in the one formula we have uh, we have a problem with one root and with our alternative formula we have a problem with the other root. Uh, and so uh, sometimes we can introduce uh, alternative formulas, but the more general solution, which is uh, not necessarily a hammer that we should always use, but a more general, uh, but when it's possible, because it does come with cost, uh, we can uh, uh, extended precision is the general help, right? It helps, helps reduce uh, the amount of error that we introduce. All right, so I, I wanted to show you guys uh, just real quick that, uh, well, that I was right. No, <laughs> not really, but, but, but I wanted to show you uh, what happens when we use single precision, what happens when we use double precision, and what happens when we use the modified formula. Remember I pointed out, although they didn't point this out in the book, remember I pointed out that, that although our, our root gets better with the modified formula, one of the roots gets better, the other one gets worse. So, um, but, but then we can also look at what happens with doubled precision. So I've coded up the example that they give in figure 3.13 in the book, uh, their Excel VBA example. Uh, I just expanded it to include this uh, X2 root. Uh, being uh, the using the modified formula as well, and and if we go ahead and run that, and uh, look at the results, we see our our single precision results are a, as expected. Uh, you know what? These are probably really small. Let's uh, let me let me get it a little bigger for you, and then. I'll... Okay, now I just zoomed in a little bit so we can read this better. Uh, so now we have our single precision results, our double precision results, and our mod modified formula results. And so, uh, well, I didn't, whoops, I didn't label these. This is x1, this is x2, uh, x, whoa, x1, x2, uh, x1, and x2. So uh, we can see that when we use single precision, we we get some some pretty a pretty substantial error in the first root. Um, the the second root looks fine. Uh, this is using the normal uh, quadratic equation, uh, the normal formula. We get some serious problems in the first root. The second root looks fine, uh, and when but when we use double precision. Uh, our problems go away. Whoops, our problems go away. We 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 have good enough precision. Everything looks good. Uh, when we use a modified formula, the first root looks good, but of course, when we look at what happens to the second root, uh, it's terrible. And so, uh, really, <laughs> the lesson that we get out of this is sometimes uh, we can use a modified formula. Uh, in this case, we we could have a switch statement to figure out which one's which and and everything else, but. But really, uh, the only general solution, or, or the only general, and, and it's not, you can't always fix it by adding precision, fix a problem by adding precision, but the only general uh, thing that, that will always help uh, is adding uh, adding precision to the results. We, I mean, we can see the difference between the single precision and the double precision in this case. So it always helps uh, the more precision we have. But no matter what happens, no matter how much precision we have, uh, we're still going to see the general trend uh, and a numerically unstable algorithm uh, with with one representation is still going to be relatively unstable with another uh, representation. It just depends on how big uh, how big a difference is we're talking about. Um, we just we we can reduce our error with higher precision, but it will never but it will never go away.